Hey everyone, thank you for watching the video today. We are dealing with the wide world of Whirlpool problems and having a French door Whirlpool refrigerator that is not cooling in the upper cabinet. There are a few different styles of these refrigerators come to find out that are either in the single evaporator, which means there's only an evaporator in the freezer, or the double evaporator system where there's a cooling evaporator here inside the cabinet. And they both have very similar structures on how they look on the inside. This is going to look identical to the double evap system even though there's only one evap in it i want to show you how to take everything apart here and look to diagnose and troubleshoot possibilities of why it's not cooling properly and then do some repairs that could take care of that so we're going to run through a few different problems here and hopefully help you out get the issue solved today make sure to check the description for the products that we use to repair and replace so let's get started the first thing that we need to do is to be able to access the rear of the refrigerator by taking out any shelves and drawers from your refrigerator. Typically you can just lift up on them and then out to remove them. With the top shelves out of the way, you're then typically going to need to remove either the chef's pantry entirely or at least the rear part to access the evaporator panel at the back of the refrigerator. In this specific unit we're working on today, I can simply remove the glass from the top, then remove the chef pantry drawer itself. Then remove the rear crossbar just by lifting it up and slanting it to the rear, giving me access to the panel once that bar is fully removed. Now, not every style is this way. Other models may require you to remove the large crisper drawers above the chef's pantry by pressing in on these retention tabs in the drawers, then begin to remove the glass, then the wire trunk that is hidden in the cross piece, and then that allows you to remove the crossbar assembly on these other styles of kitchen aid refrigerators. Still even further, four and five door models may have a more extensive system to access the evaporator system in the back. I don't have any videos on how to do the teardowns to get to the evaporator, unfortunately, but there are other videos on YouTube that will show you how to do that. From here, you can use a quarter inch screwdriver or a drill gun to remove the screws from the evaporator cover. Once you have those screws out though, the problem is that the air tower needs to be removed to then allow the cover to come off, and this part is actually quite tricky. To remove the air tower, first use a flat bladed screwdriver to depress the retainer tabs that are around the middle of the shelf bar. This will loosen the panel up to where you can pull it forward. There typically is one problem though once you get to this point. It's more or less locked in at the very top of the refrigerator assembly. Now sometimes you can take just a putty knife and bend the cover enough to pull it out here on the top and I have done that at times but I was not able to do it on this specific model in the video. The more direct route right now is to press the water filter housing cover in to open up the filter area. You're going to take the water filter out which could spill some water so make sure to clean that up and then locate these two screw holes. The two screws can be removed by using a very thin quarter inch hex head driver. The holes to insert the driver are very small, so you need a very thin screwdriver to do this. Once you have those two screws removed, you can take a putty knife or flat bladed screwdriver and slowly pry the cover panel off. This is not sophisticated and it feels like you're going to rip the cover panel off because there's barbs holding it in on the rear part that you can't actually access. But once you have the panel off, you're going to note there's going to be two or three wire harnesses that hold the panel and light covers on that you're going to need to remove. You're going to lose your light at this point. We still have the refrigerator plugged in at this point, by the way. But once you have those wire harnesses unplugged, remove the panel. Once the panel's off, you can see the air tower is fully exposed, and you can see the lip of the air housing that was hidden under the cover, and you can just now remove the housing. On the single evaporator models, you're going to first need to remove the sensor cover that's integrated into the evaporator panel. You're just going to press the clip in and then thread the white thermistor into the air tower, and then now you can remove the air tower assembly. Now, unfortunately, I can't show this super well on camera due to my fat body and just the way the camera angles work. With everything removed, here's what we have on the fridge at hand. All you're going to find in this particular unit is an air dampener and the sensor system that we just moved away from the panel cover. This damper opens and closes to allow airflow into the refrigerator cabinet. If the damper is not working right, it cannot open or close to allow the air in, causing no airflow and therefore no cold air. We will want to test and then replace this if it's needed. Now, if you have the dual evaporator system, you're going to see this monstrosity behind your covers. It's much larger and has three main components, the air dampener to the left, 
the fan system in the middle, and the wire harness to the right. Depending on the model and style of refrigerator you have, you could have the fan and sensor system being a one-piece assembly. On others, the damper and sensor system are one piece and the fan is by itself. Now, prior to this point, if you saw a lot of ice build up on the evaporator cover or had trouble removing the cover due to ice, chances are the sensor system is bad. It's a very common problem on this style of unit. Also note on this KitchenAid that we had in another video, the water tray has been busted. This caused this particular unit to have lots of water flood into the crisper drawers and that would need replaced as well. And I will have a link to that specific drain pan as needed. From here, we want to test the various components, the damper, the fan, and the sensor system as needed. And how you do this is going to vary from model to model. But let's find the secret manual. Now, at the front of your refrigerator, your secret manual should be up here underneath the right hinge cover of the refrigerator. Take a quarter inch screwdriver and unscrew the hinge cover and you should find the manual that will show you exactly how to enter the hidden codes into your unit to test your refrigerator's damper, fan, and sensor systems. On a Whirlpool or KitchenAid refrigerator with this style water dispenser and touchscreen, entry into the mode is the same way. Press the two left buttons and hold them simultaneously for three seconds. This allows us to enter the modes to test the refrigerator's damper system as well as fan if it has one. You're going to use the guide on your technician sheet to figure out the exact codes you want to use. Now, in the case of this video and the last time I did this about two years ago, test number three is what you want to enter to trigger the damper system. And again, on the double EVAP systems, it's going to likely be test three as well, but reference your manual to make absolutely sure. If the damper does not cycle properly on this mode, it's going to need replaced. It should cycle on and off. And this goes for both styles of refrigerators. Here's a quick view on this single evaporator system on how to take out the damper system as well as the sensor system and then replace the damper as it was very easy to do. I will have a link to the replacement dampers for both style of units in the description as well. On the dual evaporator style unit, if you had ice buildup that was very heavy and notice that your thermal sensor is located here on the top of the refrigerant loop, you're going to want to replace the fan and thermistor system together as they are both known to go bad fairly often on this model of refrigerator. Now I do have another video on how to take these apart and, and reinstall them. I will have a link to both the parts in the video on how to replace them in the description as well. Another thing to consider is using a multimeter to test the thermistor that maintains the cooling of the unit. If you need to do that, you'd wanna use a multimeter and figure out where the wires go into the sensor system and test for resistance. On the single evaporator unit, this is the resistance values you should expect, and I believe it's going to be the exact same on the dual evaporator system as well. The resistance values will be the same, but how you do this with the multimeter is going to vary from unit to unit, so I'm not going to do that, but the values are here for you to be able to understand how to do that. Now, at this point, typically the upper cabinet cooling problem is solved well in the upper cabinet, but let's say you've tested the damper the sensors and the fan, but let's say all these things work and you don't see like an ice buildup or anything else. Let's go ahead and put the refrigerator back together. We're going to put the cover back on, then the air tower and make sure it snaps into place and locks into that middle bar shelf. You're going to put the water tank cover back on. Don't forget to plug the wire harnesses back into place. There are two or three small barbs that insert into the refrigerator's housing at the top to secure this panel in place and you have to kind of guide them in not the easiest thing to do. Once you have that part done, put the two screws back into the water filter housing, then put the water filter back into place. From there, install the chef pantry crossbar, the glass, and any doors and drawers as needed. Next, we want to check the condenser coil and the fan system. This can be a common problem on many refrigerators, causing it not to cool enough. If you go to the back of the refrigerator and unscrew the cardboard panel, you will find here that there's no condenser coil on the back, but it's useful to check the fan here and make sure it is in good running order. On this style refrigerator, the coils are actually in the front underneath the refrigerator. You can access the coils by removing the kick plate, which requires me to open the freezer door a little bit to get easier access to the plate. Oh wow, these coils are in terrible condition and they definitely need cleaned. You can clean them a few different ways using compressed air, or in my case, a condenser coil brush and vacuum cleaner. If you don't have a coil brush, check the video description out for a coil brush kit 
as well as all the other product tags for all the replacement parts I'm using in this video. But you wanna make sure that you remove as much dust and dirt from this condenser coil as possible. Not having these coils clean will cause your refrigerator not to cool properly. With the coils cleaned, there's one final area you can check, which is the freezer. If there's a lot of ice behind the evaporator panel, the air will not flow up to the refrigerator and it won't cool. Usually though, if there's a lot of ice behind this panel, it would mean your freezer's not cooling well at all. And that situation may be for another video. We could take the door off, then the trays, then the panel and see what's going on. But I wanna show you something that's called a pro gamer move. You already have the technician's manual from the refrigerator. So let's force this unit into the forced defrost mode. On this refrigerator, we're going to go into the service test mode and we're going to mode number 38, and it was the same on the KitchenAid refrigerator I did the same video for two years ago. You need to go to test number 38 and select either a short or long defrost. At this point, the compressor and all the fans should shut off, and it will start the heater. There are two ways to figure out if the defroster is working without even pulling the panel. Either open the freezer door and listen for hissing after about five to 10 minutes, telling you that ice or water is vaporizing because the heater's running really hot, or you could test for wattage and amperage. On a refrigerator like this, you could plug it into a kilowatt meter and see what wattage it draws when it's running this alleged defrost mode. On this style of French door refrigerator, it would be pulling between 400 to 450 watts in this mode if it's running properly. Another way to do this without a kilowatt meter is to take a multimeter with an amp clamp. You would clamp the multimeter on the wire going into the refrigerator, which are the black wires, going into this fridge right from the power cord. As you can see, with both the kilowatt meter and the multimeter, we are getting a proper draw. Remember, amperage is 120 volts on these refrigerators, so it should be about 3.6 amps. So we know that the defroster is working properly, and I can actually hear the defroster hissing in the background. Now, if you know that it's in defrost because nothing's running, but you don't see any wattage, you could then start ripping the freezer apart and troubleshoot that cabinet. But again, for this video, I'm not going to do it because that will come apart in different ways. And I will have a different video for that later on to diagnose and troubleshoot all the things that are particular with the freezer cabinet. Now, one final thing to do on your refrigerator, if you did find out, especially on a double EVAP system, that there's a lot of ice, you want to put it in the basic defrost mode. Your refrigerator tries to clear the ice out at various timings based on how often you open the doors. But if you go to mode seven and then switch the mode from one to number two, it will defrost the refrigerator every eight hours, which should take care of the ice more frequently. And again, if you have a dual evaporator system, Whirlpool, the factory that made the unit, will typically suggest you set it to that timed mode because it can solve a lot of issues on both the double evaporator system as well as a single evaporator system. I hope this video helped you solve your problems with your refrigerator not cooling. There are other things you could check like the control board itself, but we'll do that in another video. I hope this video helped solve your problems. We went over all the major fixes and I hope that you check the description for the parts if you need to replace anything. Have a great day.